I know we've been ex yeah, expecting that hurricane to hit Florida and kind of mm -hmm. its path is a little wishy-washy, but I know they said be prepared Florida, Alabama, up to the Carolinas. It yeah. could really uh, affect anywhere in the southeast. Yeah, it really could in some of the trajectory three, four, five days out. Now taking this thing more inland, you know, maybe away from more of the Carolina coastline. But yeah, it really is. As soon as you get more than a few days out, it's hard to know exactly the trajectory that it's going to take. And the one thing that we do know for sure, this thing is taking aim at southern Florida. Now exactly which side of the peninsula uh, it it hits more directly, still a little uh, up in the air as far as computer models go, but it's actually starting to take more of a westward shift, so it could more impact uh, West Florida, but areas like Miami are expected to get hit very, very hard. A powerful storm this is. So Hurricane Jose, you see off in the distance there on the right, Hurricane Irma, a monster that has just been thrashing its way through the Bahamas this morning, still sending very heavy rains into parts of the Dominican Republic and Haiti, Cuba, and parts and other parts of the Bahamas next up on the list. So the Caribbean uh, getting absolutely hammered by this storm. The devastation that we're seeing those images hard to look at. And many meteorologists uh, over in the Florida area calling this a nuclear storm because of how powerful it is. To put this in perspective, a lot of you might remember Hurricane Andrew that devastated Florida back in 1992. Look at the size of of Irma, how this thing compares, that gives you a good perspective of just how monstrous the storm is and how potentially devastating and catastrophic it could be as we continue to track this thing as it moves toward Florida. So right now, situated about 450 miles off the coastline of Florida, so still a ways out, but over the next 24 hours, we're going to start to feel the impacts of this thing here in the U.S. And then by uh, 48 hours out, by late Saturday into Sunday, we're expecting landfall. So 150 mile an hour sustained winds moving to the northwest at 16 miles an hour. That track's going to continue. We'll put this into motion again this taking us at through part of Saturday into the early morning hours if we make interaction with the land here in Cuba, we could see this storm weaken a touch more, but still this is expected to stay a category four storm as it makes that northwest turn just like we feared it would all along. And again, the cone of uncertainty shows all of southern Florida, that southern peninsula at risk for hurricane force winds, life threatening rain winds and storm surges. So a very, very dangerous situation as the storm approaches the coastline. It is expected to slam into the Florida Keys and southern Florida by late Saturday and early Sunday. Wind speeds, though, look at that sustained at 100 50 miles an hour still at that point. So very dangerous uh, hurricane warning up in effect for all of southern Florida. That southern peninsula hurricane watch is not far behind it, but extending up into about the middle of the of the state there. So again, this is going to be something that impacts the entire state of Florida. Uh, which areas get hit the exact hardest and how hard still to remain unseen, but certainly something for folks need to be taking seriously. Around here, different picture. We are talking about mostly clear skies out there this morning, uh, but yeah, some smoke and haze still left in the area. A little bit of shower activity over in the Pacific Northwest, hinting at a slight change there. Could help clear out the air quality in Seattle. So hey, we'll, uh, they need that, so we'll give a thumbs up to that. Our air quality should improve some today and tomorrow, thanks to our air that's now coming out of the Southwest. You can see uh, different colors. The ridge of high pressure shifting east. We're instead noticing slightly cooler temps. This area of low pressure kind of responsible for the change. It could shift up some monsoon moisture for us, providing a slight chance for some afternoon showers and storms. But overall, it uh, should help some of the smoke from the fires burning to our north get shifted back up in that direction. So we're hoping that the thickest of the smoke won't be as much of an issue, hint, as much uh, of an issue today as yesterday uh, and same for tomorrow. But then by Sunday, we're expecting high pressure to build back in, giving us that stagnant pattern that will allow all that smoke and haze to settle back into the valley. So if we see relief today, it's going to be short-lived. Highs this afternoon, upper 80s that will stay shy of 90, thanks in one part to the smoke. Thanks in another part to that change in the weather pattern, but still a good mix of sun and clouds through the afternoon. We'll start out about 79 at the lunch hour and then climbing up into the upper 80s. We're going to watch for that isolated shower or storm to roll through mostly in the mountains this afternoon, uh, but could get one or two trying to knock on the door here in southwest Idaho. Similar picture tomorrow, otherwise mostly dry, but if you're going to be up camping in the mountains, I do think it would be smart to uh, just know there could be a mixed bag, some stray storms out there, especially Saturday, but temps look perfect. 80 degrees back into the upper 70s Sunday with clearing skies headed into the first of next week. For us, we're stuck with the upper 80s all the way through Tuesday. We should hopefully stay shy of 90. Kind of nice to see a seven day forecast about the 90s on. I'm not sure the last time that happened. Partly cloudy these next couple days, then clearing out as that ridge of high pressure builds back in. Likely going to stay smoky overall. The worst of it probably coming back next week. Then look at Wednesday, Thursday. I want to spend a second on that one. 85 Wednesday, 74 on Thursday. So we're talking about a 10 to 12 degree temperature drop between Wednesday, Thursday. That's usually a sign something's coming in. Something's going to change. Hopefully it would bring some uh, showers, isolated thunderstorms.